Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This feels really good to be sitting down and filming a proper video. This is my first time filming in 2017 and I'm very excited for all the content I have coming up. If you are an old subscriber, welcome back. If you are new to my channel, hello. And if you guys haven't seen my last video, it was a little vlog from New Year's Eve and I really, really loved it. So I will link it up there and if you'd like to have a watch, please click on the i button. It was a really cute, fun vlog. Today I'm gonna be doing my 2016 beauty discoveries and I'm calling it beauty discoveries because I kind of do this every year. It's not really a roundup of my favorites from the year because so many favorites get carried on year by year and there are some products like the Oscar Renaissance Cleansing Gel that I've just been using for years and I don't wanna keep repeating myself. So like I did last year, I'm gonna list down in the description box the products that I'm still loving that were mentioned in previous year's videos. But in today's video, to keep it interesting for you guys, I'm just gonna talk about the new beauty discoveries. So don't worry if there are some cult favorites that aren't mentioned here. It doesn't mean I'm not still loving them. Just didn't wanna repeat myself really. So let's talk about some new products that I discovered in 2016 and that I absolutely love and I know I'll continue using this year. Okay, I'm gonna start with like hair, body, skincare and then move on to makeup. First product is from Way. And Way is a brand I discovered in 2016 and that I love. It's a hair care brand. It's like, O-U-A-I, but I'm pretty sure it's Way. It's a very kind of cool, trendy brand, but I actually think the products are great. I love their texturizing spray as well. But this is the Clean Shampoo. So it's a detox clarifying shampoo, which is the sort of shampoo you use when your hair has product buildup. So if you have that problem where every time you wash your hair, it just doesn't feel clean, it's probably because there's a buildup of product in your hair. And shampoos like this are really good at kind of stripping it back to clean hair. But with clarifying shampoos, you have to be really careful if you have dry hair like me, or if you have colored hair, I also have colored hair. And this one is safe for dry and colored hair, and it doesn't leave your hair feeling like squeaky clean, so squeaky that it's gonna like break into pieces. It's so, so nice. I've used about half a bottle, and I picked this up in Harvey Nichols, so I'm really loving that. The next hair care product I got towards the end of 2016. I don't know if you guys noticed, I really hope you didn't, but I'm sure you did. I kind of kept getting little bits of white in my hair, and it wasn't so much dandruff, because I only got it on the last day when my hair needed a wash. So I wash my hair like every four days, which is fine for hair that's really dry. But I found that on the day where it kind of needed a wash, whereas I used to be able to get away with just one more day before I washed it, before I found that on like the third or fourth day, I was getting loads of white bits in my hair, like crazy amounts. And I'm pretty sure it was down to having a dry scalp. And I tried quite a few products. My friend Ruth from A Model Recommends recommended Philip Kingsley Flaky Itchy Scalp Shampoo. And the more I think about it, my scalp was actually quite itchy as well. I don't know why I didn't like try to fix it earlier. But anyway, I gave this a go. Again, I had the same problem trying to find one that was safe for color treated hair. And this one is absolutely fine for color treated hair. It's really gentle, but it actually does the job. And now I don't seem to have any more kind of white flaky bits in my hair and I am loving using this. I don't use this every time I wash my hair but I think it's really really great. The Ameliorate Skin Smoothing Body Lotion is absolutely a favourite from last year for me. I never really got into body lotions before but this one is so good because it really smooths out your skin. It has AHAs in it and I find especially if you have like bumpy parts on the back of your arms or legs, even if you don't, it's the sort of body lotion that actually works and I loved using this last year. I'm not massively into tanning, but I found a tanning product that I love and I'm just kind of sticking with it. It's the Bondi Sands Liquid Gold. This is so, so good. It just makes tanning so much easier because you don't have to put it on and walk around your house for three to four hours like in your underwear, cold, sticky, and then wash it off. You literally just, it's a dry oil, you just spray this onto your skin. I tend to like exfoliate the night before so that my skin's just prepped and ready. But you just spray it on, rub it in with a tanning mitt and that's it, done. It dries, you can get dressed straight away. It's so easy, I never ever get streaks with this. It's a really nice like golden tan. I've been through about three bottles. It doesn't smell like biscuit. It's so, so good. I think this is the best fake tan I've ever used. I also discovered Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. This isn't a new product. I don't know why it took me so long to try it. It's a balm 
cleansers. It's like a solid oil. That when you rub it into your skin, it turns into like a liquid oil and it takes off makeup so well. It's kind of fragrance free. It's got nothing in it, but it really does the job well. And I really like it. It's actually quite similar to Caroline Hirons cleanser, which you actually get a cream one in that as well. I only really just started using that towards the end of the year, which is why it's not in this video, but I would recommend both. I really enjoy this cleanser and it's definitely become part of my routine. Still on the skincare thing, this year, last year, I discovered the brand Kypris. I have four products from the brand. I do not want to drop this, that would be a disaster. Ta-da! Um, and I really, really love them. It is expensive, but totally worth it. I've used it for almost the whole year and I know it's definitely worth it now. Moonlight Catalyst, I would use in the evening sometimes if I want like a bit of an exfoliation. Clearing Serum, I would only really use if I had like a proper breakout on my chin or something. This one's probably my least used. Antioxidant Dew, I love this one. I would use this in the morning to give my skin a nice glow. And Beauty Elixir 1, I also actually have Beauty Elixir 2, which I probably use more because it's little, so I travel with it. This is just a gorgeous rose oil and I absolutely love it. Their products are incredible. Definitely one of my best kind of skincare discoveries from last year. Okay, a couple more skincare bits. The Estee Lauder Wake Up Balm. I love this stuff. I use this every morning now with my moisturizer. It's probably not the most like moisturizing. I should really use moisturizer and then be using this as a primer, but I've just, I've been so lazy with my skincare routine like the past six months. So I've been skipping quite a few steps and I've just loved this because it's like a moisturizer that gives you proper glow. It's like an illuminating balm. It could definitely be used as a primer as well. But I love this. I would 100% repurchase this. I think it is great. There aren't many lip favorites in this video because you guys know I've been suffering from my lips like the past four months now. They're kind of getting better. I'm still not at the stage where I feel comfortable wearing lipstick yet. Um, the lip balm in the end that kind of saved me, although I still think I might need to go see a dermatologist, but the lip balm in the end, the only one that worked, I swear I tried every lip balm ever, was the Bioderma Moisturizing Stick. This is my fourth stick. I'm going through these so quickly. I just got it from my local chemist. It's so, so good. If you suffer from dry lips, just give this one a go because I tried so many and none of them worked and this one like instantly made them feel better. So I'm in love with that. I will repurchase that forever more. Okay, I've got one perfume favorite before we go on to makeup stuff. This is the Jo Malone Nutmeg and Ginger Cologne and I wore this on my wedding day along with black Blackberry and Bay, which is one of my old favorites. This isn't like an everyday perfume for me, but it's really special and I'm so glad I discovered it. It smells like a beautiful spa. Oh, and it will always remind me of the wedding, so I absolutely love this perfume. Last year, I discovered the Real Techniques Complexion Sponge, which completely changed the way I apply my foundation. I used to always use the Real Techniques Buffing Brush or the Bobbi Brown, I can't remember what it's called, the Buffing Brush, their version. But now I use a wet sponge and I never use a brush to apply my foundation. I really think this is the best way. I thought it was such a faff before I tried it. And I actually did try the Beauty Blender and then I kind of wasn't into it and didn't use it for months. And then I tried this and I don't know what the difference is, but I love it. I think it's the shape. I basically run this underwater. I make it really wet. I squeeze it out. And then no matter what foundation or base I'm applying, I will use this to pat it in. And if you want that kind of dewy skin, I just think this meshes your foundation so much better with your skin. It makes it look so much more natural. It does mean that if you want a fuller coverage, you end up having to do kind of more layers than you would do with a brush. But now when I use a brush, I just feel like my foundation sits on top of my skin. This is the only way to really make it look like it's part of my skin. I use it for concealer as well, but I tend to kind of go over my concealer again and use a brush just because this kind of meshes the concealer too much. I, I love this. I have four of them on the go at the moment. The foundation I discovered this year is the Hourglass mm, Vanish Foundation, I think it's called. I've got two shades here, ivory and nude. Neither of them are perfect for me, so I'm definitely need to go to a counter and see if I can find like the perfect match. But this is such a great foundation. I am going through it quite fast because it's very creamy but it's basically a stick foundation. You wind it up, I just kind of put a few strips on my face and then I have to use a really wet sponge because at the beginning I find it quite hard to like move around the face, but once I've blended it in, it does take a little bit extra work, but once it's blended in, I just think it looks so nice. I always get so many compliments when I wear it. I'm wearing it today. I think it's good when I'm like filming or if I have an event, it's slightly 
fuller coverage than my other foundations, but still like so glowy and natural and so easy for traveling on the go. I just think it's a great foundation. A couple of lip products. Last year was the year of the nude lip for me. I just really went off red lip, even during the Christmas season. Well, by the time Christmas came, I had my sore lip situation. So I really don't think I wore red lip throughout the whole year, which is crazy. I could probably throw in loads of lip products, but I just wanted to talk about the two main ones that kind of stick out in my memory. Laura Mercier Spiced Rose. It's a gorgeous nude, but like a brownie nude. It's very 90s, it's very chic. I just think it's so pretty. And 2016 was also the year of the Kylie Lip Kit, and I'm a fan, I think they're great. I've also enjoyed like the Stila Liquid Lipsticks, which are definitely easier to get hold of, but I think the Kylie lip kits really did impress me last year. Her eyeshadows did as well. I'm excited to see what happens with the range. To be honest, I've kind of stopped though. I'm not gonna keep buying online because I find the process really stressful and expensive. I reckon at some point it'll be easier to get hold of or she'll open a shop here or something. So I'm just kind of holding out for now and watching what's happening. But I really did enjoy the lip kits. Here I have Candy K, Posy K and Dolce K. And I think they're really nice. The Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors have definitely been a favorite for me. Champagne Pop was created by Jaclyn Hill, who's an amazing beauty YouTuber in America. And it's a gorgeous, like, peachy champagne, like, orangey highlighter. I'm wearing it today, if you can see it there. It's definitely like a wow highlighter. If you want people to see your highlight, this is the one to use. And it's so pretty, I just absolutely love it. But the other one I use on days where I just want like quite a natural highlight is Moonstone. This is really pretty as well. Um, this is just one of the Becca like original shades. But I think Becca highlighters are so nice. The Anastasia ones are also great, but I think I would pick the Becca ones if I had to pick between the two. And the brush that I discovered in 2016 to apply my highlighters with is the Morphe M501. This was also recommended by Jaclyn Hill and I bought it when I was in New York. It's so great, it's the perfect size. You could probably just buy it from any brand. It's like a, basically a big eyeshadow brush. It's really fluffy and it's the perfect size for highlighter. I think before I was using a brush that was too big and my highlighter would just be too much. This is way more precise. You can just put it exactly where you want it. I have two mascaras to talk about. The first one is the one I'm wearing today and it's Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Lashes. I was so disappointed when I tried Charlotte Tilbury's first mascara. I really, really didn't like it. But when she brought out the Legendary Lashes, it's the most incredible mascara. It's definitely my favorite all time mascara, which is like a big thing. I also like the Clinique um, High Impact Extreme Volume. I haven't really purchased that one for a while, but I do really like this. I just bought on YouTube. It's so good. I always recommend it to people. And if you're looking for a waterproof mascara, the one that I really love is the Bourjois Volume Reveal Waterproof. This comes with a little mirror on the side, which is pretty cool if you're like doing your makeup on the tube or something. I really, really like this. It's got like a plastic brush head. Um, so you can really get like defined long lashes, whereas this one's a bit more like fluffy lashes. But these two have definitely been my favorite mascaras from this year. Oh, I just realized that I forgot to talk about this when I was talking about highlighters. This is MAC Hush. It's a cream highlighter and this was used on me on my wedding day and since then I've used it so much. I love it. Whenever I see Sam Chapman or Nick Chapman and they have like amazing highlighter, I always ask like, wow, what highlight are you wearing? And it's always this. They love this stuff. Sam used it on me on my wedding day. It's a gorgeous like peachy golden cream highlight. This is like my day highlighter and I love it. I also discovered the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. I love the Anastasia Brow Wiz, but it's really hard to get hold of. And Benefit's obviously way more easier to get hold of. It's in boots, it's kind of everywhere. And I really think they're exactly the same. So I've been using this since I got it. I would definitely repurchase it. I'm using shade four. It's just got a pencil on one end. It's like a really soft, I like using the little ones rather than the big ones. I think the big ones, often people think it's easier I think you just end up going over the top. It's also got a spoolie on the other end if you want to brush through your brows. This I actually repurchased yesterday. Um, this is MAC Groundbreaker. It's my third eyeliner of this. I absolutely love it. It's part of their Modern Twist Kajal liner range. I'm so glad that it's permanent because it's the perfect brown. I find Teddy, as much as I love MAC Teddy, it's quite a matte dark brown, so it's quite heavy. Whereas I find this is perfect for every day. It's somewhere in between like a dark brown and a light bronze. It's like a medium brown with a tiny bit of shimmer and it's so perfect. Every single day without fail, I will wear this. Well, on the final product, the Zoeva Nude Spectrum 
eyeshadow palette. So this is what the palette looks like. It's got such a nice range of colors in it. The only ones I don't really use is black. I hate when eyeshadow palettes have black in it and this like bone color. I don't understand why palettes always feel the need to have those two colors in. Does anyone ever really use them? It's got a really nice dark matte brown, which you can use as a liner. It's got like this gorgeous red coppery shade, which is just really unique, but it also has the like easy to wear bronzes, gold, some nice like a nice matte brown for the crease and under the eye. This really pretty kind of lilac-y taupe shade. This one, which is like matte all that glitters, that's probably my most used one in the palette. So pretty, I think this is an incredible palette, definitely one worth investing in. It kind of does everything you need. The packaging's a bit cheap. There's no mirror, but I always do my makeup in front of a mirror anyway. I just think that's such a good discovery from last year. So those are all my 2016 beauty discoveries. If you haven't seen my last vlog, which was from New Year's Eve, I will link it here, as well as a recent blog post. I'm trying to blog more this year. I promise I will try my hardest. And next Sunday, I will be posting my bullet journal video. So definitely subscribe and look out for that one because I know it's been highly requested and I'm really excited to film it after this. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!